All right, welcome back, and uh, we're continuing here our uh, lecture on the uh, magic wand design. So uh, we have the uh, schematic uh, document up here, and it's called Magic Wand Final dot uh, Schematic Doc. So if we look over here in the uh, project area, uh, we've got the original uh, project right here, which is the uh, the fork. So we we made a fork of the uh, source material so we can mess with this or maybe change it if we want to and then uh, down here we've got magic wand final which is the new project all right so we're starting off fresh and right now we've only got a schematic which is this document here and later we'll add a PCB but right now we're just going to mess with the uh, schematic because we've got to do the design all right so uh, first thing that you uh, will uh, want to do here is kind of let's just kind of click through uh, these uh, tabs here and, and see what's uh, what's what here. We're not going to go through all of these things and everything that they do, but let's just take a look at them. So in the home, uh, you've got the way that this is set up is there's different blocks. You know, here's clipboard access, circuit elements is this panel, graphical elements is this panel, collaboration, fonts, appearance, just kind of, you know, fairly random. I mean, fonts, who cares? Uh, Let's forget the clipboard, that's just editing things. The most important thing is the circuit elements panel. And we've got components, wire, uh, net, bus, bus entry, ports, uh, power ports, uh, a number of different things here, right? So that's what we're going to design the actual schematic with. And those are going to be uh, functional components of the schematic, right? The graphical elements are more just for looks. These are annotations. Uh, and uh, they add no functionality to the schematic whatsoever. So these are things that you might want to put into the schematic just to help uh, separate the schematic, make it look pretty, uh, text, pictures, images, uh, and, and so forth. So that's what these things are for, right? But the actual functional elements are over here. Now, I typically don't use this. I, I will just right click. So when you're on the uh, schematic page, if you right click, then uh, a uh, context menu comes up. And then as you go down here, more or less everything up in those menus is uh, available here. So I like to do that or use a hotkey. And you can see here's all the hotkeys here, uh, like component is C uh, to place a component. All right, now again, to uh, zoom in, uh, to move things around, you always grab with the right mouse, all right? And to zoom in, uh, we hold control and then scrub and that zooms in. All right, now one thing uh, that you wanna kinda uh, decide on when you're doing your schematics is if you're going to use an English system or if you're going to use a metric system and your grid snap. All right. So you can see here there's a grid snap. There's you may not. I, I guess you can see them on the video, but there's a grid here. And uh, typically uh, when you're doing schematic layout, uh, you'll set the grid for a certain resolution. And then when you're doing PCB layout, you'll set it for a completely entirely different resolution because they have nothing to do with each other. The PCB layout is very important uh, what you work in, either metric or English. Uh, but when you're in the schematic uh, entry, uh, you know, it's not as important because it's just a picture of the circuit, right? It's not going to be the actual circuit. That said, uh, if we go over to uh, view here, if we go to project, uh, if we go to tools in one of these, and I'm trying to find it if it's even here where the grid is. All right, so... Let's see, document options, I believe it might actually be in there. And a lot of times, like, you got to hunt for things here. Got to look for them a little bit. So I believe if we go to project and, let's see, document options, yeah. So, all right, so it's, it's in project, document options, and here's where this thing is hidden. So this is the document options, and we can see this snap here, how many grids, uh, and then grid size, uh, and, and these various things right here, and then units over here. So use metric. So uh, right now it's using imperial system, right? So uh, we're going to leave it in that. And, and what this, all this really matters is when you're doing schematic design is when you do the actual printing, right? Because this doesn't really relate to anything physical in the physical world. It's just a picture. It's just a schematic. So uh, now one thing is, uh, I would prefer to use uh, millimeters in the metric system for absolutely everything, but it seems like uh, CAD and PCB design is still kind of locked into this uh, English or imperial system, and it's been for a while. So even though a lot of ICs 
We'll uh, primarily use a metric system to measure the pitch between pins and whatnot. Uh, just as many will use uh, the English system. And a lot of times when you're doing routing and whatnot and doing PCB design, you'll always work in a uh, English system using mills. And the reason why is because most mechanical uh, engineers uh, work in, in mills and they work in a thousandth of an inch, which is an English uh, measurement. So since the PCB is a mechanical kind of uh, construct, we kind of get stuck with the English system. So it doesn't mean you can't use a metric system, but it just may be harder and more difficult and there may be conversion. Anyway, we're going to leave this in Imperial units. All right. Now, another thing, so I'm just going to click cancel here. Now, another thing, uh, if you go to templates here in project, so take a look here. So see this sheet here? This is a certain style uh, sheet. It's got a certain size. Now, one thing that you'll notice is see the title size number revision. This bar here, which has all this information, is kind of going out here in virtual space. And this is so small, we can't see it. So if we go to templates and we go to general templates, we can change what this is. All right. So if we say A4 and we'll say uh, uh, choose document scope, what do you want to apply it to? We'll just say just this document. All right, and you'll notice it made it a little bit uh, bigger. All right, so there's this A4 size, and now we can see there's more stuff here. We can see the Circuit Maker logo and whatnot. That just gives us a little bit more room to work in. That's all, and we can see the size down here, and we can change this as we like. Okay, so we could go here and let's do it again, and we can say uh, A0. All right, and if you take a look now, A0 is huge. So this is huge. You can see there's the uh, document information. So this is if you're going to design something really big all on one page. All right, so we're going to go back to what we had there. We'll go to uh, A4. And, and then I'm going to grab it and I'll zoom back in. All right, so we'll just kind of work with A4. Okay, and I'll save that. All right, uh, now... Uh, when you're doing a schematic entry, uh, a lot of times what uh, what engineers will do, just like in uh, source code, you'll have one page for kind of uh, various elements. So you might have one page might be for the power supply or power supplies, another page for the microprocessor, another page for the memory, another page for the input output, and so on and so forth. It just keeps it separate. Uh, but when you're learning, uh, it's it's easier since your designs aren't going to be that complicated. Just put it all on one page. Just make the page big enough. And then that way you can easily see everything, zoom in, zoom out, and just deal with it. All right. So I would just suggest keeping it simple and not trying to get all hierarchical uh, to begin with. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, so let's go to our source, which is what we're trying to copy here. All right. So uh, we know we need a 555 timer. And... Uh, we, uh, we know we need this 4-bit counter and this 3 to 8 decoder, right? So let's just get right to it. So we've got this 555 timer. Now, uh, this is a kind of, so if you look at this part number, LMC555CNNOPB, all right, great. Now, the one thing that I said was when you select components, uh, and you're doing your schematic design, there's two kinds of components that you're going to be selecting. One are uh, specific components, a very specific IC that only one manufacturer makes. So say one manufacturer makes a, a certain processor. No other manufacturer makes that processor, which means I have to use that processor. I can't use a generic version of it. There is no generic version of it. So for example, an AVR, an Atmel AVR 328P, it's the Arduino processor, right? Microcontroller. That's the only company on earth that makes that processor. Now, there may be multiple footprints. There may be a dip footprint, a QFN, a QFP, but I have to use that manufacturer. Now, with other components, there are hundreds of manufacturers that may make the same component. All right. For example, uh, passive components like capacitors, resistors, and so forth, uh, say like this 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor here. This is a, a monolithic capacitor. It uh, it has no polarity, so it's not electrolytic. It's just a ceramic capacitor. Now, uh, surely I can pick a very specific one, but what I really care about is the footprint of it because I know that I can replace it with a 100 or a 1,000 different capacitors. So as you're doing your schematic design, we don't have to pick the exact part for many of our elements. We just have to pick a part that has the same footprint that we need, and then we can exchange it for something else. All right? So in other words, uh, 
uh, say like this 555 timer. This comes in maybe a surface mount component and a through hole component. The through hole components are always 8 pin and the pitch is always 0.1 inch. So as long as I have an uh, 8 pin version, which they all are, that's 0.1 inch pitch. Uh, I don't really care exactly what the exact part number is. It might be from Philips, it might be from TI, it might be from this or that. Uh, inside of uh, Circuit Maker, but I know I can replace it with something because that's replaceable. But other things are not replaceable and I need a very specific component. So for example, you see here uh, the uh, AAA battery holder, right? Uh, the AAA battery holder, that's very specific because it's mechanical and I want it to look a certain way and have a certain size. So I can't just change that to something else. So I actually had to find that in DigiKey. Then I had to see if it was in Circuit Maker and then vice versa. I, you know, I maybe I checked in Circuit Maker, AAA battery holder, and then I saw what parts came up. I looked at them in DigiKey, and I looked at their pricing. So, what drives a design is the functional requirements and the cost. The cost, the cost, the cost. And when you're selecting parts that are specific parts, now remember the generic parts we don't care so much about. If we have a 1K resistor, I can find a million 1K resistors from a million manufacturers. But if I'm uh, putting a part in my design that's very specific and there's only one company that makes it, I need to make sure I can buy the thing. I need to make sure it's available. I need to make sure it's not going end of life. I need to make sure of a lot of things and I need to make sure of its cost. So that's why you got to look on DigiKey, look on Mauser, look on Octopart, and make sure the part is available, make sure it's uh, cheap, and if it's not, you, you have to pivot to uh, another part, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's begin here, and uh, why don't we just start, let's build this up from the power supply and, and, and move our way up. Okay, so this particular part right here, if I uh, get this stupid thing off, so if I double-click this, all right, what comes up is a bunch of information about the part. All right, the unique ID is not what I'm interested in. It's got an Octopart ID here, and then it's got this uh, Keystone uh, Earl here uh, in Octopart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that, all right, and there's the picture of it right there. I'm just gonna cancel that. Now, now watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna open up uh, Octopart. I don't really, I can copy the URL in there. So there's the URL, I'm copying the URL. All right, and here's the part right here. So now over here in DigiKey, here's the SKU number in DigiKey. Now also, let's take a look at these prices. So the prices from all these different manufacturers who look at it for 10 for, use a 100 or a 1,000 as kind of your uh, budgetary pricing. They're about 60 cents, about 60 cents for a 1,000. Now I've already went through this and I like this part, but let's go through the process. So now I go into DigiKey, I put that number in here, and here it is here. So there's the actual part. And I look at it and I like it. That looks good. Now, it's under battery holders. It's a AAA battery holder. It's got plastic around. It's got springs. It's a good part. It's Keystone Electronics. I'm familiar with this company. I like it. Now, how uh, we originally would go through and do this is we would say, okay, uh, you know, we want to search for a AAA battery holder. So you can see here, product index, battery products, this, that. There's all these different search uh uh, trees that we could go under, but I'm just going to put in AAA battery holder. All right, so let's just start off from the beginning. All right, so I start off, and, and here we go. Battery holders and clips and contacts. Good. Okay, so great. I'm going through here, and now we want a AAA battery, number of cells, just one cell. Now, how do we want to mount it? All right, chassis mount, custom, free hanging, PCB, surface, through hole. Yep, we want through hole. That's enough for now. Remember, with DigiKey, Mauser, and all these different search engines, if you hit, uh, if you select too many different search uh, requirements at once, sometimes it won't return anything. So we'll apply the filters. All right, and now let's also make sure it's in stock. Okay. Okay, and now uh, a number of these have come up. So let's hover over it. So I don't like that. That's out of the question. This is pretty good. That's not bad. This is a little bit better. Oh, that happens to be the Keystone one. That's why I like it. This one, and eh, don't like that. It's kind of ugly. That one's kind of cheap looking to me, even though it's a Keystone product, and it's probably... Uh, now, what's interesting about this, it's actually a little bit more expensive, so maybe I have some thicker metal. And here's another one by Keystone. But I like this one. All right, so this is the one I like. So I click on that. And this is, this is the process we do. We actually search for it in here and because we want to compare to other things. So now that I found this part, the question is now, can I find this part in Circuit Maker? So 2466 is, is the part number, right? So 2466, Keystone, all right? And then here's this Digi part, uh, DigiKey uh, part number. Now, the interesting thing about Circuit Maker is, so let's go back here. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our schematic, which has nothing in it. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to place a part. Okay, so we're going to right click. And remember, we can go here home and we could just click component and it would bring this up right here. Or we can right click and say place and then there's all these things we can place. We're going to place a component or we can press C. All those different things are the same. Now, we can look at our history. We can put this information in, but we're going to go to choose. Now, one thing here. When you're using this uh, dialog, this is cloud connected, internet connected, and it doesn't update sometimes. And so you got to give it a you, you got to give it a minute to kind of find things. So first, I don't want to look in my favorites because I know it's there. I don't want to look in the project because it's not in there. I want to look in Octopart. Now, check this out. If we put this number 2466, we might be able to find the part. All right. And, and sure enough, it just came up right there. And this is it right here. Battery holder, triple A, and look at it, it's the exact same. But let's just try triple A battery holder. And if that's in the search term, all right, and then you can see there's all these different here, things here. So there's a four double A, and there's a two uh, uh, triple A, a three triple A battery holder, something or other, and you know, go down here. So now, if we wanted to use uh, Circuit Maker to find our battery holder, we might not find it if we don't put the right search term in. Like we put in just AAA, that's going to come up with a, a lot of different things. You're going to have AAA in the search term, like here, an LDO, an LED, lots of different things. So you got to kind of go through here, all right? And we can see there's battery holders right here. So if we go here, there's one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. But again, I can't tell what their prices are. I can't see their availability unless I put it down on the board and start messing with it. That's why we want to work the other way. We want to kind of work from DigiKey sometimes or Mauser to find the part we like and then put it in here. And usually it, uh, it'll cross-reference. Octopart will have it. But the question is, is there a symbol and is there a footprint? And see this footprint right here? If I click on it, I can actually move it around. And I can actually, if I press... Uh, shift and then holding down the right mouse button I can I can rotate it in 3d to see it okay so that's our part right there see that 2466 that's what we want all right so I want that I like that that's good here it is Keystone and here's the footprint of it now that footprint is very specific someone made this footprint and if this was a more generic part it might work with other battery holders all right but we're just gonna put it here all right so we're gonna put one there uh, we're gonna put one here and we're going to put one here. All right, I'm going to press escape, and that's going to get me off of that mode. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so here are three battery holders. Okay. All right, so that's looking good right there. Uh, now, remember, the long side is positive and the short side is negative. Right, so we'll go back to uh, our source design here. So this is kind of what we're trying to make right here, right? We're trying to make this thing right here. Okay, so let's go back to uh, this schematic. Okay, so we've got our battery holder. And uh, so now, what about manipulating the symbols on here? So this is the symbol, and associated with this is a footprint, and that's for the printed circuit board, and that's what uh, it's going to uh, plug into or solder onto. That's the footprint, but also associated it uh, associated with it is a 3D model. The model is just for looks only, right? And that's when we go to uh, when we go to this view, looking at the uh, the uh, source material, and I press three, and I get this 3D view here. That's what these things are. These are the models. But this thing down here on the PCB, that's the footprint, right? That's very important. So like on this resistor, the footprint is just these two pins. On this IC, the footprint are these pin holes here, and these are uh, these are uh, uh, where the uh, where the chip goes in. And then the 3D model is this thing here and it doesn't have to be perfect you can see like this is a really bad 3d model this one right here this one's a better one this is more actually what a chip looks like okay they look like these uh, trapezoids okay so but it's just for reference it's just for looks so you can see this kind of 3d rendition of things okay all right so let's uh, go back here let's go back to our schematic here okay so now if you want to move something just click on it with the left button hold it for a second and it'll grab and then you can drag it around okay and we can do that. All right, if, if you ever get all mucked up, just start hitting escape and that'll kind of put you back in, in the neutral mode and you'll be okay. All right, so now let's connect these wires here. So how do we connect wires? Well, we can press the right button and we can say place and we can look through here wire or we can press W, that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna press a W on the keyboard and now you can see, uh, and I'm gonna zoom in, I've got this little X and so uh, when I put it on top of the nodes of a component, 
you can see right now it's just kind of a black X. And when I put on here, see it's a red X. Now click, and now see this wire starts going. And then I'll click here, and now I've got a wire. All right, let's move this over. Click here, click here, good. Click here, and I'm just going to click here. I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to right-click to stop, and then I'm going to press Escape. That takes me out of that mode. All right, so look at that. So we're, we're doing, we're getting our battery pack here. So I'm going to put the three batteries in series to give us our, to give us our 4.5 volts. Each is 1.5 volts. If it's an alkaline type battery, if it's a lithium ion, it might be 1.6. If it's a nickel metal hydride, it might be 1.4. Roughly, the whole thing is going to add together to 4.5. Now, let's go ahead and change what the reference designator is. Uh, so if I click uh, right on the reference designator, I can uh, edit it, right? Now, if I click on the part symbol itself, it'll kind of give me the big dialog. And I can also mess with the designator, OK? Another thing is, uh, if I just click on this, I'll get this. Uh, just the, this is the uh, string that describes whatever it is. That's just a, a text string. And I could edit that, all right? Another thing is, if I say if I want to move these things, so say I want to drag this, just uh, click it, hold it, and you can drag it. All right, so you might want to move these things around, right? But let's change the reference designators. All right, so let's go ahead and make this BT1, like battery one, make this BT2, make this BT3, okay, back out. All right, control S, my fingers, control, every time I do something, control S, control S, control S. All right, now, Keystone Electronics uh, 2466, uh, that's great, but uh, let's, uh, let's shorten this up a little. Keystone 2466, and you know, maybe we just say AAA, right? We know it's a AAA battery holder. That just helps us remind ourselves. And I'm going to click on that one, and I'm just going to copy and paste that same string in there. All right. And I'm doing it a little different than what I did on this one. Uh, let's see here. See, I just called it AAA battery holder. I didn't say who made it in this version, but on this version, I'm changing my mind. That's all. No big deal. Okay, now we need a ground here, so we need to put a ground symbol. All right, so let's go up to home here, and let's look at We've got all these different things. Now, we don't want to draw a ground symbol. We need an actual electrical ground symbol, so it's connected to the net ground, GND, ground. So let's look over here. Component wire, net label, bus, bus, port, da, 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 power port. That looks promising. Ah, here they all are here. So these are all different symbols for uh, power. So let's get this ground, and there it is. We've got a ground. Now, many CAD tools, you can't really do this. So when I have this ground, if I just put it right on top of here, this tool is smart enough to realize, here's one wire, here's another wire, and I'm going to connect it. What will happen in others, other CAD tools is you'll lay it on there, but it actually just lays it on there. It doesn't make the connection. So what you do is you put it here. Then you would take a wire. I'm in, I just press W. I'm in wire mode. Then you would connect it, and now you would have a connection. So now when I drag this around, it's connected. Okay, but uh, we're going to take advantage of this tool and this little feature that it has. So we're going to grab a ground right here, and I'm just going to connect it right there. All right, and I right click to get out of whatever mode. Now if I grab it and select it and move it, see it's connected. That's what we want. Okay, good. Okay. So, Control S, let's save this. Okay, so we got our batteries here, we're doing good. Now we need a switch. Now this is a big uh, topic. We talked about switches in the uh, uh, lectures. There's a gazillion switches, uh, countless switches. What I really care about here is cost. Uh, mechanical performance of the switch, is the switch uh, hardy? Can it take current, a lot of current? Can it take a high voltage and so on and so forth? One manufacturer that I use a lot is called eSwitch. All right, so the first thing that I did was, uh, again, remember, the uh, circuit maker is connected to octopart. So it can find any part in octopart, any part. But that doesn't mean there's a symbol. It doesn't mean there's a footprint. It doesn't mean there's a 3D model. So again, the first thing that I did was this. I went over here and I said place. And I said like component, right? And then I went here to choose. And I said, you know, just give me a switch. I said e-switch, I think. I said e-switch, because I know uh, I like e-switches. All right. And then uh, some of these switches started popping up here. So E-switch, E-switch. And, and I said to myself, OK, you know, it looks like we've got a lot of models here. And see, it's downloading. Uh, see, this one's got the symbol. It's got the footprint, but no 3D model, all right? Uh, push pull, single pull, single throw. We know what that is. Again, it's got the uh, symbol. and But here, it's, uh, it's got no 3D model. 
no 3D model. The, you know, the, you, you can't see a switch on this, all right? So anyway, so I'm like, okay, great. This has got e-switches. It's got, a, you know, a few of them. People have created symbols and models. Let's see if we can find something I like. All right, so then what I do is I go back and we go over here and then we just say uh, uh, e-switch. Now we could look up switches, we could look up e-switches. Okay, now what do we want? Push button, no. Rocker switches, maybe. Tactile, toggle, dip switches, slide switches. Okay, so slide switches. All right, and then I start looking through these things right here. And I know what I want, and I know what I like for switches. So, so the first thing is, uh, you know, how many poles and all that, right? So uh, we want something that... Uh, uh, is it double pole? Is it single throw? Uh, that kind of thing, right? And if you remember, like the poles are how many different uh, contacts, and the throw is like how many different directions and all that, right? So we only need this thing to be on and off, okay? So if you look at, uh, let's see here. So if you look at uh, our design here, and we go back to our schematic, we selected this uh, 1218 switch here, all right? This 1218 switch. And uh, it was actually this first one right here. If I do a, a sort by price, all right, we do a sort by price, and we go bulk and cut tape, apply filters, and we go in stock, apply filters, and we say we want active, apply filters. Now, w what do we need here? Uh, you know, on, off, you know, all these things right here. We this You can sort of use this, but this is more what we need here. So single pole, double throw. So single pole, double throw. So I want to be able to throw it in one direction, throw it in the other direction. That's the one that we want, that kind of switch. All right, and we can see this EG1218. Now we've got these other switches here. Now my other concern is how big is the switch, right? How big is it, right? So uh, actuator length is two millimeter, three millimeter, five millimeter. There's some variance of it. And then I would go in here and look at the mechanicals. Now, if you look at these switches, these things kind of go through the printed circuit board. This one is for a panel mount. Uh, this one goes through the circuit board. This one is, this is kind of a micro switch. We could use that one if we wanted to. But uh, this one's kind of a nice hardy switch. I've used this one before, this EG1218. Uh, this can handle 200 milliamps at 30 volts. So that'll do... Uh, this, we're not going to use much more current than this. But if we were going to use much more current, then we got to kind of go down here to these 500 or 5 amp and these kind of bigger switches. But this switch will do. So this EG, this one right here, so that's what we're going to do. And it's actually a nice looking switch. So we'll click on it. We look at its prices. Down at 1000 it's only 37 cents. I like that. Switches are very expensive. Mechanicals, especially switches, are very expensive. It's like they're made out of gold. All right. So we like that switch. So now the question is, can we find this? in uh, Circuit Maker. So uh, Octopart definitely will always have it, right? So Octopart always has it. If we go to Octopart, which Circuit Maker is connected to, we type in the part, sure, of course, Octopart's got it, it shows you all these different things. But the question is, does uh, Circuit Maker have a footprint model and uh, symbol for it? That is what we need to know. So we right click, we're gonna say place, we're gonna say component, or we could have pressed C, or we could have clicked it up here with component. Now we're gonna go to choose, now I'm going to type in this EG1218, all right, and we see what comes through here. So only one a thing popped up, and then these are all the revisions. So as someone has worked on this, they've made multiple revision, uh, uh, revisions. All right, so here's the switch right here. So there's actually a 3D model of it also. So if I click this, and there it is. So you can see it right there. So that's nice, right? It's a little it's shaded, a little bit funny. So we want this. So this is perfect. So we'll hit OK. OK. We'll hit OK there. Now, now we'll put the switch like this. Now, I'm just going to click it down there for a second. So when the switch is in the upper position, this uh, path is connected. When it's in the lower position, this is, path is connected. We can put the switch either way that we want, all right? doesn't really matter. But uh, let's see what we did over here. Yeah, so we did it like that. We did, uh, we did it in the, kind of that direction. So we'll just kind of do roughly the same thing. Remember, we don't need to copy this, but... It's not going to hurt. So now I could connect it like that, but let's just leave it out there. Let's uh, hit W for wire mode. Let's add a wire. Okay. Now uh, let's add another wire here, and we're going to put this up here. This is going to be our V sub CC. This is our power to our system. So now we need another uh, power port. So we're going to go up here in home. Remember, you can click through these view, tools, outputs, all these different things here. But in home, uh, contextually, 
this is kind of what we want. And uh, we're going to go to PowerPort here. Now, there's different uh, versions of this, plus five, uh, a bar style, wave style, all this kind of stuff. Uh, in our case, uh, we're just going to call the uh, signal V sub CC. All right, we're just going to call it V sub CC. And, and then again, it depends on what style you want this. Now, I prefer the uh, arrow style here for power, all right? But this bar style uh, is also cool. You know, whichever one you want to use, just be consistent, all right? So uh, we'll use this arrow style. Oops, I don't want to do that. And if you look back here, I use the bar style here. So let's use the bar style. So uh, I thought I used the arrow style. And we're going to go V sub CC here. So there's our V sub CC, and I'm just going to connect it right there. Okay, now, control S, I'm saving again. Let's, if I move this around, it's definitely connected. Now what I'm going to do is, I, uh, you know, we built this up in this corner, which is fine, but I want to move it a little bit. So just like anything, just rubber band it. All right, and to rubber band it, uh, use the left mouse button, and it creates a rubber band. Now I've selected the whole thing, and just grab anywhere. And just move it a little bit. Be careful if you grab and let go and grab again, you might grab a, a subcomponent and drag it. If you do, just control Z like you normally would undo and everything will be okay. Okay? All right. Uh, what's next? All right, so we got uh, we got our switch. Now uh, let's go label our switch. So we're going to double click this and we're going to make that switch one. All right? And control S. All right, so everything's looking good. Now, one thing I'm going to add here is a capacitor. Now, the reason why I'm going to add a capacitor to this is uh, once we turn this power on and this thing is powered up, uh, V sub CC is going to be powered by these batteries. Uh, as we uh, access these batteries, the voltage on the uh, batteries is going to change as the current uh, gets dragged from them. All right, because each one has an internal impedance. So how we can smooth that out a little bit is we can put a capacitor on this side, and when we want charge, it'll pull it from the capacitor first, then get it from the batteries, because the capacitor will be lower impedance. So we'll put a capacitor here, a big capacitor, like a, uh, a uh, electrolytic, and that will smooth this out a little bit and, and uh, put a little less load on the battery, all right? And uh, it'll keep the voltage a little bit more stable so it's not uh, fluctuating. All right, so we need a uh, electrolytic capacitor. There are about a billion of them, and there's all kinds of different uh, classes of them for different uh, uses, for uh, you know filtering, for general capacitors, automotive, this, that. There's many, 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 many. What we really care about is the footprint. So we're going to put a through-hole capacitor. We want the holes to be separated by a certain amount of distance, whether it's 0.1 inch or 0.2 inches or uh, 0.3 inches, and then we can just put any electrolytic later that we might decide to put in there. But first, we care about the footprint. All right. Knowing that, let's go back to our uh, original here. And you can see here's the capacitor right here. And I'm just saying it's 47 microfarad. It might be 47, it might be 100, it might be something different. But I just put 47. That's a good number uh, to filter this. Now, if we look at this capacitor right here, one thing you'll notice is it's polarized. There's a plus, so this is a polarized electrolytic capacitor. And then uh, if we double click it here, it's uh, this capacitor right here. Here's a DigiKey Earl, here's the Octopart Earl, all right? And then here's the uh, part number right here. Okay, and then here is the uh, 3D view of it. And let me see if I can zoom out, zoom out. Give me a second here, get this to cooperate with me. And I'm not sure what I did, but anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay, so this is good. And then uh, size and diameter, this particular one is four millimeter. Uh, but uh, what I really care about is the pitch. And see this, 4 by 7 by 2.5. So this is a 4 millimeter diameter, 7 millimeter height, and 2.5 millimeter pitch. 2.5 millimeter is uh, 2.54 is 0.1 inch. So this is a 0.1 inch uh, pitch capacitor. Uh, uh, many capacitors will fit into that size. So that's what I wanted. So what I really did was I went and found a capacitor that kind of, you know, is something that I might use, but more that I cared about, did I have a model, a symbol, and, and a, 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 a footprint for it? So here's the part number right here. So I'm just going to take that at a, uh, this part here on this one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DigiKey. Where did DigiKey go? I'm going to put this part number right in DigiKey. And here it is right here. Here's our capacitor. And, and again, we can use any electrolytic capacitor that's roughly the same size and all that. All I needed to do was find any capacitor that has a footprint that I like, then later I can change it, because this is a generic passive component. It can be replaced. But I like the price also. This particular one is not a bad capacitor. So at 1,000, it's only 5 cents a piece. So we look at it. 
it's uh, this this particular one is 10 microfarad. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Uh, pl plus or minus 20%, 16 volt rating. So that would all work. General purpose. It, it talks about some other things here. And then here's what we care about here is the uh, lead spacing is a 2.5 millimeter. It's almost uh, point, you know, uh, 0.01 inch, right? 0.098, okay? So now we could find an actual 47, but at this point I don't really care. 10 is fine, and I could, I could look at this part number here, and I could probably engineer a 47 microfarad, right? So there's the 10.0 microfarad encoded there, I would imagine. So if I take this and... I go like this, and I put 47 there. I bet, if I'm lucky, there it is. There's the 47. So this is an actual 47 microfarad. The size and the shape is all the same. So you can see it's seven tall. Uh, this one is uh, got a 6.3 millimeter, so this one's a little bit bigger. And then the pitch here is 2.5. So we're, why don't we just use this one? Let's see if we if this one's inside of uh, the... Uh, and we can try using the actual part number. All right, so let's see if Circuit Maker has this one. So let's go back to our design here. And let's do place component. And we want to choose, and we're going to go here. We're going to put the actual part number. And it may not be able to find it. Uh-oh, didn't find it. Because no one made a model of this one. All right, so let's go uh, back here. Let's put the DigiKey part number. All right, let's see if we can find it with that. I'm not going to give up until I look at that, look for that. Nope, can't find that either. Okay, I'm going to go like that. Can't find that either. So see, can't find it. So that means that it, it may not even be an octopart. We'll go to octopart and look. All right, here it is an octopart. And sure enough, it can find it in an octopart. So that doesn't mean that uh, Circuit Maker can find it. So again, this is why there's this little bit of a disconnect. So let's go back and let's just go back to the... Uh, the uh, 10 microfarad version. So we'll go back to DigiKey here, and uh, we'll go here, and we will make this 10, all right? And the 10 does exist. Here it is here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, part number, all right? Go back here, and now let's try and see if we can find this part number. Ah, there it is. And someone's made a nice model for us, all right? There's a 3D model, and the footprint is right there, and then there's a symbol. So we're just going to use this. All right, and then later we're gonna uh, put a maybe a larger capacitor. Okay, now what uh, what's going on here? So the capacitor is in this orientation. I don't like this. So what you can do, and, and then this is a little bit tricky, but if you uh, have the uh, object selected and you're holding on to it, if you hit the space bar, it'll rotate around that pivot point. So, oops, it just teleported. All right, so that there it is, and sometimes you got to be careful. All right. And then now I'm going to connect it right here. See the little red uh, on the screen there uh, where it's making that uh, nodal connection? And then I'll press escape, press escape. And now I'm going to drag, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to drag, uh, still careful, drag the component. All right, so in this case, it's kind of made this node here that I, I, I really don't like. So I'm going to delete that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go place that component again. And uh, this is the same one. All right, we're going to rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm going to go into wire mode, escape, press W, wire mode. All right, press escape. Now I can grab this and drag it a little bit. Now, uh, as far as reference designators, you can, do, you can just leave them all blank and then kind of do them as you go, or you can kind of do them in sections too. So uh, in this case right here, I'm just going to call this C1. It's probably going to be different than the uh, other design. And this says cap. Uh, polarized uh, to, I'm going to change that to what it actually is. So in our case, I want to make this like, you know, 47 microfarad, all right? Or we could say, hey, make it 22 to 47, your discretion, all right? We could say that too, all right? And that's that. And then this also needs a ground, so let's go to ground, and we're just going to copy and paste. So we're going to press Control C, all right? Uh, now, yeah, and this is a little bit tricky too. So you got to, uh, I'm still not quite sure the behavior of this, but once I do Control C, if I do Control V, you got to stay close to the object because the more you move away from it, it creates a local origin, and then it uh, it copies it away from the object. So anyway, now I, I'm just pushing against the screen here, and then I'm going to connect it there. Okay, there we go. So looks good. Let's uh, save that. Now another thing you might want to do, something I do is uh, I'll pull this up a little bit. Now you see this ground and this ground. I kind of like things on the same level, right? So let's, we could drag this down a little bit, and then we can uh, level it out and see, yeah, they're about on the same level. So that's nice. Control S, make it neat. Doesn't hurt to make things uh, neat. Now I want some text describing this. So what did I call this over here? 
what did I call this over here in the source? I called it uh, battery power 4.5 volts. All right, battery power 4.5 volts. So I could just take that and copy it, all right, that text, and I can come here and I could place it, right? I could do that, but let's say we don't have it. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's not a circuit element, it's a graphical element. So we'll go to text string and I'll put it right here, all right? And then uh, I'll zoom in and I'll double click this, all right? And then we're gonna say this is battery power uh, approximately 4.5 volts uh, DC. Let's add DC to this one. And let's make this a little bit bigger. This is New Times Roman 10. And uh, remember, clicking on anything with this cloud-connected software causes it to do things. So we'll give it a minute here to do whatever it needs to do. It's probably downloading a font list and, uh, and some things like that, and who knows. All right. I don't know what size to make it yet, but uh, I'll start with 22. I'm not too happy about this navy color. So let's start with 22. All right, let's go to this uh, this one right here and let's see about this. So if I double click this, this is a Times Roman 14 bold and it, it's still in navy color, all right. So we'll go over here and uh, this one, we got this at 22. So we'll, we'll use the same font size, uh, 14. Where to go 14 and then we'll make it bold all right we'll hit okay okay and then i'm just grabbing it and dragging it and there we go and that's it control s we have our power supply all right so that is our power supply right there our battery power supply when the switch is in uh, this position it'll be on when it's in this position it'll be off when you turn the batteries on what's going to happen is uh, it's going to first uh, charge into this capacitor and then this capacitor will then become the uh, charge source uh, and then when uh, current is needed, uh, the charge will come from this capacitor first and then it'll come from the battery. So what's nice about this is it'll, it'll smooth out the ripple a little bit as the current is drawn from these batteries and the internal impedance of these batteries affects the voltage. So this is a little bit uh, uh, smoother design than just having the batteries directly connected to V sub CC. Okay, uh, now let's see. Uh, how much time do we have here? I want to go a little bit farther. I want to kind of do this in chunks. So let's go back to our original schematic here. Now, I think I have, uh, do I have a, a power LED here someplace? And I'm wondering, do I have a power? No, I don't. So when you turn the thing on, these LEDs all just work. So there's no power LED here to, to show you that power is on. All right. But there is this magic wand. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to copy it in here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to put this right here. Okay, just to put that in there. All right, so we've got our power supply and now that the power supply is here, I can see I can move it a little bit. So I'll just move it up here. That's good. We'll just leave this magic wand there. I'm just gonna drag that. Okay, so we got our power supply. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and commit our design here to make sure it's up there, wherever up there is. All right, so that's all good. Now notice we haven't messed around with the printed circuit board at all. We're still in schematic design mode here. We're, we've got a lot of work to do. So we're not worrying about that right now. We're just worrying about this. All right, so we'll go to our, our source material here. We'll see. So this is, uh, we, we're you know getting there. Now you can already notice one thing is switch one, BT1, BT2, uh, two, BT3, but this is C4. And the reason why it's C4 is I probably, yeah, I probably, what I did was, I, uh, in this case, I might have designed the whole thing, and then I went back and designed the uh, power supply, and by the time I got to this capacitor, it was like the fourth capacitor. See, there's one there, there's one there, there's a five and six, and then uh, there's probably a C3 here. See that? And this ended up being C4. So it doesn't really matter. They're just reference designators, all right? So let's go back here. Oops, let's go back to our schematic of our magic wand final design. So that's it. So we're ready uh, to move on to the next piece. Okay, so uh, we're going to cut the video here and we'll start back up in a second. So let's go to the schematic. So the uh, next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and deal with a 555 timer. All right. That's kind of a biggie. And that's the the heart uh, literally of the entire system and everything. Uh, uh, the signal flows from the 555 timer. So I'm not going to start with the LED driver down here. I could if I wanted to. Hardware doesn't care which order you go in. But first, let's get the clock. Then let's get the counter. Then let's get the LED driver. And that's how we're going to do this. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and stop here and I will meet you in the uh, next video.